Welcome to this informational webinar for schools. Today, we are going to overview the Clean Classrooms for Carolina Kids program, which is an expansion from the Clean Water for Carolina Kids program. My name is Jennifer Hopinick Redmond, and together with my colleagues, we will overview the process. We are from RTI International, which is an independent nonprofit research institute dedicated to improving the human condition. The North Carolina Department of Health and Human Services has contracted with RTI International since 2020 to execute the Clean Water for Carolina Kids program. This work is now being expanded to the Clean Classrooms for Carolina Kids program, which will identify and restrict or mitigate exposure to lead in water, lead-based paint, and asbestos hazards at public schools and child care centers across North Carolina. Key program staff includes those from both the North Carolina Department of Health and Human Services, along with RTI, to make sure that we execute all aspects of the program. Today, our presentation will overview the following. First, state rules, the rationale and funding behind, behind the process. A lightning summary for the Clean Water for Carolina Kids program a program overview for our Clean Classrooms for Carolina Kids program, and then prioritization and launch plans. First, we'll overview the state rules rationale and funding. In North Carolina, there are now rule requirements that mandate testing for lead in drinking and cooking water, the identification of lead-based paint hazards, the identification of asbestos hazards, and after testing or inspection, mitigating or restricting any hazards that are found. As this is a legislatively mandated effort to address lead and asbestos hazards in public schools and childcare centers, North Carolina facilities are required by law to make sure requirements are met. Mitigation can include faucet fixture replacement and filter installation, and this is covered by the program. And for lead-based paint and asbestos, if mitigation occurs, reimbursement is possible in full for child care facilities and up to two-thirds of the cost for schools. So why are we focused on lead and asbestos? Well, lead has been used in paint, especially in buildings built before 1978, and lead is also used in water infrastructure with increasing restrictions in effect in 1988 and 2014. Asbestos is also used in building materials, especially in buildings built before 1988. Exposure to lead and asbestos is a public health concern, especially for children. There is no safe level of lead exposure or asbestos exposure. For lead, health effects are irreversible, lifelong, and increase as exposure continues. And this includes issues such as damage to the brain and central nervous system, learning and behavior problems, slowed growth and development, and hearing and speech problems, leading to lower IQ, inattention and behavioral concerns, and underperformance in school. For asbestos, Exposure increases the likelihood of several cancers, including laryngeal cancer, lung cancer, mesothelioma, and ovarian cancer. American Rescue Plan Act funds were allocated to address these public health concerns in North Carolina. Specifically, $150 million were allocated with approximately $33 million for lead in drinking water testing and mitigation and the remainder for lead-based paint and asbestos. Program organization is as follows. The North Carolina Department of Health and Human Services is managing the overall contract, while RTI International is managing the overall program, including lead in drinking and cooking water testing and mitigation, lead-based paint risk assessments and testing, asbestos inspections, reinspections and testing, and the overall program. Liaisons include the North Carolina Department of Public Instruction, the North Carolina Division of Child Development and Early Education. And then for reimbursement, when schools and childcare facilities conduct lead-based paint and asbestos abatement, 
you can contact the North Carolina Department of Health and Human Services Health Hazards Control Unit, and we'll overview that process as we go on. Now let's do a lightning summary of our Clean Water for Carolina Kids program. We have an online enrollment process whereby you will receive an email from our liaison to enroll and then you can join a pre-enrollment webinar at a time of your choosing. At the end of the webinar, you'll understand how to enroll online and receive a pin to do so. Once you enroll online, you can fill out our surveys. Our approach is as follows. After the enrollment, we have participant training, participatory science testing and shipping for water, lab analysis, results along with what our results mean, and potential risk mitigation actions. We also have communication throughout the process. Our results reporting is also continuously updated in real time and supports transparency throughout the process. We have a public mapper, which you can type addresses, um, names, or look by county to see results by facility. And we also have a program summary of all enrolled and completed facilities. Our program findings to date are with more than 4,600 childcare facilities and 25,000 samples. And we overall have found that lead is common in water with 75% of samples and 92% of facilities with detectable lead and 12% of facilities and about 3% of samples with lead at or above the state action level. This translates into lead in about one in five water fountains and one in three kitchen sinks um, above the American Academy of Pediatrics reference level of one part per billion. For this program, we are building off our award-winning community-engaged approach to improve children's environmental health in childcare and school facilities. We'll now start our program overview for the Clean Classrooms for Carolina Kids program. The objective of our Clean Classrooms for Carolina Kids program is to identify and eliminate exposure to lead and asbestos hazards where North Carolina children learn and play. Program participation is free for the lead in drinking and cooking water component, lead-based paint, and asbestos. We have free water mitigation, which includes faucet fixture replacement and filter installation. This meets all rule requirements, and there's also cost reimbursement available for lead-based paint and asbestos abatement. It's in full for centers and up to two-thirds of school costs. Now AJ is going to tell you more about how to participate in the water section of our program. Thanks, Jenny. Today I'll be talking about the water section of your program and your school's participation. This is a 100% community science driven program, so we'll provide you with support and assistance as you collect your school's water samples, enroll your school, and understand your results. The legislative requirement involves collecting water samples using the EPA 3Ts method, restricting access to taps that exceed the North Carolina lead action level, and making test results available to the public in any cases where your water exceeds the state action level. Our program will help you meet all of these requirements by posting results online, sending you sample bottles, and is 100% free to your school. Our program will also install faucet fixtures and certified filters at any taps we find to be above the lead action level in North Carolina. Our program, however, does not include water filter maintenance, piping or plumbing changes, or lead service line replacement. If we suspect a lead service line, we'll reach out to North Carolina Department of Environmental Quality to connect them with you to help mitigate that issue. Now we're going to go over the lead and water section and what is involved in each step of our process. So like Jenny said, this process will involve first a pre-enrollment webinar where you'll attend, learn about some of the hazards of lead and asbestos, and get a pin to enroll your school or child care facility. The primary facility contact will complete our online survey, entering demographic information and other things we'll cover later. Then our team will send sampling kit to your facility to collect their water samples. Your trained staff will collect and ship samples back to RTI's lab where our team will analyze the water samples. Then we'll send results and recommended actions. 
will ask you to notify facilities, staff, parents, and students using our public results page and pre-written materials. And finally, if we do find any lead hazards, we'll conduct risk mitigation or let you and your team do that. So who should enroll your facility? You should select someone who's familiar with your staff's building layout. You can also have someone familiar with water usage patterns tap to tap and staff who will collect and ship water samples. Information you'll need include building information such as the year it's built, the number of floors and wings in your building, student demographic data, a list and location of all drinking and cooking taps, the number of taps you'd like hand wash only signs for. You don't have to test hand wash only sinks as part of this program. And then what water filter type and brand you're currently using and where you're getting your water from. Any taps we find above the North Carolina action level of 10 parts per billion will offer free water mitigation. We ask that you discontinue the tap right away and place signage or a tape over the tap indicating it shouldn't be used for drinking. If the tap is above 150 parts per billion or 15 times the state action level, we'll conduct follow-up testing before we start mitigation. That's because fixture replacement and water filters aren't a good solution for taps with this much lead in them. Add taps that are above 10 parts per billion and after we've completed our follow-up testing, we'll implement a faucet fixture replacement program and provide you with a water filter certified to remove lead and install it for what we call a double barrier approach to eliminate two potential sources of lead. After all this has been completed, our local or regional environmental health specialists will come to your school, collect samples, and analyze them in the state lab. Those results will be posted on our public mapper to show the public that any issues that you've had have been addressed. If water is still above 10 parts per billion or the state action level, after the mitigation actions have been completed, we'll ask you to post do not use signage and recommend that the tap not be used for drinking water consumption. All tap results will be shared with the North Carolina Department of Environmental Quality to consider additional funding support for North Carolina State Resolving, Revolving Fund to help with lead service line replacement. We also will provide support in creating a drinking water management plan that you can use to maintain your water filters and implement flushing programs after school breaks. Now I'm going to hand it over to Kelly, who will talk about lead-based paint and asbestos sections of the program. Thanks, AJ. Similar to the water section, there are legislative requirements regarding lead-based paint and asbestos inspections. All facilities must ensure an on-site inspection is conducted by a professional for both lead-based paint and asbestos, unless they meet the exemption criteria. If facilities submit documentation of a prior inspection that occurred within the past three years, or if facilities provide the building age exemption documentation, they may not need an on-site inspection. We will go into more detail on the documentation a bit later. Facilities that do have an on-site inspection are required to restrict access to or mitigate any identified lead-based paint or asbestos hazards. The results should also be made available to notify parents and staff of the inspection findings. Our Clean Classrooms for Carolina Kids program provides support by coordinating an on-site inspection by a certified or accredited professional as needed. We also provide a mechanism to upload any submitted documentation for review and verification. Results will also be posted on the public results page to help you notify parents and staff of the findings. Legislative funding to partially offset the cost of mitigation is available through NCDHHS. Mitigation and abatement is reimbursable up to two thirds of the cost for schools and is fully funded for childcare facilities. As a quick overview of the program, the first step is to attend a pre enrollment webinar and complete additional section training for lead based paint and asbestos in our portal. This training will equip you with the tools you need to complete the lead based paint and asbestos enrollment surveys. After completing the training, the primary facility contact completes the enrollment survey to enroll your facility, during which you may be asked to upload specific documents. Once complete, our program staff will coordinate the review of your survey and may assign a certified and or accredited professional to conduct a lead-based paint risk assessment or asbestos reinspection at your facility. Any samples collected by the professionals will be analyzed at an RTI-designated laboratory. 
we will provide you results and recommended next steps directly in the portal where you can determine whether to mitigate or restrict access to any identified hazards. If your facility chooses to mitigate hazards, you can request reimbursement from NCDHHS. We recommend that the designated primary contact should be familiar with any prior facility inspections for lead-based paint or asbestos, could oversee efforts to restrict or mitigate any identified hazards, or be the local education agency's AHERA designated person. To complete the lead-based paint and asbestos section enrollment surveys, you will need information on your building, such as when it was built, student demographics, previous inspection details, any concerns about exposure, past and planned building renovations, and exemption documentation, if applicable. As I mentioned earlier, documentation must be submitted to RTI in order for a facility to be exempt from an on-site inspection. For lead-based paint, facilities may be exempt if they provide documentation associated with a lead risk assessment conducted within the past three years. Facilities that were built after 1978 may also be exempt if the superintendent or superintendent's designee can sign an attestation that no lead-based paint was used in the buildings. For asbestos, facilities may be exempt if they provide documentation of an asbestos reinspection conducted within the past three years. Facilities that were built after 1988 may also be exempt if they can provide a HERA asbestos inspection exemption letters for all buildings. Documentation associated with, the, with these exemptions must be provided to RTI in order to meet the rule requirements. Additional documentation may be requested to verify the prior assessment or reinspection meets the rule requirements and any identified hazards have been addressed. We estimate approximately half of schools may need an on-site inspection for lead-based paint and asbestos based on building age alone. This assumes the other half of facilities not receiving an inspection submit the required building age exemption documentation. These estimates also do not account for facilities that submit prior inspection exemption documentation, which will be a significant number of schools for asbestos given the AHERA reinspection requirements. And funds are now available for asbestos and lead-based paint abatement reimbursement from NCDHHS. Abatement activities completed on or after April 29th, 2022 are reimbursable up to two-thirds of the cost for schools and fully reimbursable for child care facilities. This is not applicable for most facilities unless you have conducted abatement within the last year. And for facilities that have not conducted abatement within the last year, we'll provide this information again once you reach this point in the program and are deciding whether to perform mitigation activities. You can learn more by using the QR code or follow the link on the slide to the NCDHHS website. And I'm now gonna pass it over to Jenny to discuss the prioritization and launch plan. Thanks, Kelly. First, we'll overview some factors associated with lead and water risk to contextualize why we're doing the prioritization in the way that we are. With our Clean Water for Carolina Kids program, we found that the use of well water, buildings built before 1988, and Head Start programs were more likely to have lead and water risk. These programs and buildings built before 1988 were also more likely to serve a higher percentage of children of color and a higher percentage of children with free and reduced lunch. We also know that the effects of lead and asbestos exposure are most prominent for zero to six year old children. Because of this, our school outreach prioritization plan is as follows. Our priority criteria include elementary school facilities, Facilities where more than 50% of students receive free and reduced lunch. Facilities where more than 50% of students are non-white and also where there are buildings built before 1988. You can see on the right that this results into six priority categories. If schools meet four out of four priority metrics, that means that they will be contacted first by our liaison DPI, for school facilities, and also if you have a child care facility at your school, and this includes a pre-K, a Head Start, or an after-school program, you may also receive an email from the Division of Child Development and Early Education. Facilities that do not meet any of these priority criteria will be contacted last. 
but rest assured that we are doing this on a rolling basis, but we are contacting all facilities over the course of this year. If you feel that you would like to participate earlier or have any other questions and comments, we'll have a way to contact us at the end of this webinar. So when will you be able to enroll um, overall? We are planning to launch later this summer. Facilities will receive an email, as I mentioned, and it will be on a rolling basis. Once you complete the webinar and receive a PIN, you can subsequently enroll online. Note that enrollment will happen on a facility basis, not on a district basis, based on the prioritization criteria. Facilities may choose who they would like to delegate to participate in the process, and participation is free and will allow facilities to meet all rule requirements for lead and asbestos hazards. We'd like to also vocalize our appreciation for folks that are providing on-site support, which include the regional environmental health specialists and county health officers for post mitigation water sampling and when consulting is needed. Our liaisons, the Division of Child Development and Early Education and the Department of Public Instruction. Our program participants, so that means school and childcare staff and you. And we really thank you for helping to identify and eliminate exposure to lead and asbestos hazards where North Carolina children learn and play. Thank you for listening today. And now we'll open it up for questions and comments. If you have any lingering questions or comments about the program, you can text or call 1-888-997-9290 or contact staff at cleanwaterforuskids.org slash Carolina slash contact or you can also put your phone up to the QR code or scan your mouse over the QR code now. Thank you.